What's up guys, today I wanted to make a quick video going over the different types of data set formats you can have when you are fine tuning LLMs. Uh, in this case, we're going to use LUM2 as an example. So I am one to believe that most data set types for LLMs can be broken into one of four data set types. Uh, those are the pre-training format, the simple format, the instruct format, and then the chat format. Going over the pre-training format, this format is used to pre-train GBT-like models. It's basically that you just have terabytes of text and all the work you do is break it up into chunks of the context window, add a BOS and EOS token to mark the start and end of that chunk and then just train on ton of text so that the model learns uh, patterns that can be found in English or other languages or even um, just patterns in sequences basically. So the pre-training format isn't really useful outside of few shot and zero shot learning. Uh, this would be like the original GPT-3 where you would have to give a few examples of what you want or have some creative prompting to really uh, get the models to work well. Uh, they weren't super easy to use, um, but they were still somewhat useful, but uh, they definitely are the least useful uh, format that you can train a model on. But they are needed to uh, get the base models. The next format, which I'm calling the simple format, is a format that's one of the easiest to do that can provide value in fine tuning rather than just basic pre-training. Uh, and to use this format, you just need uh, input and output pairs. So you have a problem, uh, some big document, and you want, you know, you, there's some then structured output that a human normally would, you know, read the input and then generate that output. Uh, that is open to automation if you have a big enough data set and you can then structure it in such a way to do that. You just basically give the input and then give the output. So for example, I have uh, a quotes data set that I reference many times in my videos. And um, what in this case, what the input would be is just the type of quote here, which is a quote about success. And then the output would be this quote about success and the idea being is that if you have enough of uh, different types of quotes and their respective output that you can then generate new quotes given uh, a different word. A variation of this data set type would be what I call simple format with tags and so the idea is still the same you have the basic input output pairs but you add tags to allow easier parsing of the output and it also allows you to more easily mark uh, multiple tasks so have a model be able to do multiple things so for example start of task one and then a tag to mark the start of the input and you can have other tags in here as well uh, and then the end of task one uh, input the start of task one output and then this would be the output that you would want to be generated given an input and then tags to mark the end of the task output and then tags to mark the end of that task. So you could have a model trained on five tasks and if you want to change the mode it's operating in, just change these tags here. And again, if you have enough input output pairs, um, you can generate a model to automate these different tasks and switch between them by changing these tags. Uh, how I always tell my clients is that uh, models like this are to be treated like functions, uh, not like uh, chatbots, how ChatGPT is like. It's meant to be used on the back end and a user should never, direct, uh, should never directly interact with a model like this. The next format I want to talk about is the instruct format. Uh, the instruct format allows your models to be much more flexible in their abilities and uh, how you prompt them and use them. Um, but they are harder to get training on your own data because you have to format your data uh, as an instruction. Uh, what I like to do when making a custom instruct model, especially if we are low on 
uh, instructions for a custom task is use an instruction data set like the Dolly 15K data set and then add uh, custom tasks that we care more about and maybe add like a uh, two to one ratio to then add our custom tasks and that allows the model to be flexible while um, learning the tasks that we really care about. Um, there are many different variations of an instruct format. You can have things like chain of thought, which sometimes shows to improve the results. Uh, you can have context, you can have no context. Uh, here we see an example with context. So here's the instruction, and then here's the input context, and then the output. And then without context, we just have the instruction and then the uh, output. So when using this model, you would create a prompt based upon whether you have context or not. First, give the instruction. If you have context, add the input tag, add the context, and then the output. So you see this example here and here, but for example, a very common use case is uh, summarize some article. That would be the instruction here. The input would be the article. And then you'd give everything up to output, and then the model would generate the summary. I think instruct models are a good balance between simplicity and their flexibility. Um, they're obviously more flexible than the simple format, but uh, as we will go over now, the chat format, they are much simpler than a chat model, and we'll go over that now. So it's my opinion that the chat format is the hardest to get working well. Uh, this is due in part to the fact that conversations have a lot of variance. Uh, you could think of an instruction as a uh, single interaction chat, but chat needs to have um, you know, multiple interactions, and that just means that you need more data. Uh, you also need a diverse data set to reflect uh, all the different types of conversations you could have. And then typically, since you also want to use a chat model uh, as a consumer-facing product you want it to uh, you know not say some awful stuff and then that means that you have to do reinforcement learning to get good results that you would feel comfortable enough to have it face a product chat models can also sometimes come with a system prompt like ChatGPT and the chat llamas do um, those are very very useful but it's hard, again, that's another layer of having to collect data because, for example, uh, a system prompt saying respond as a pirate uh, versus, you know, respond as normal. Uh, well, now you need all your data sets to be in pirate format. And so that just makes the, the, the breadth of your data set needs to be that much bigger. There's also, unlike the instruct data sets out there, not really any data set that I have found that has both system prompts and multi-turn conversations. Uh, I've seen data sets like Open Orca that has system prompts, um, but that's only one interaction. A um, human says something and then the uh, model responds. Um, so that's not ideal. And I've seen data sets that are multi-turned, but then don't have system prompts. So uh, unlike how I said I was building off of like Dolly 15K for custom instruct models, I have not found a chat data set yet that is a good um, data set to build on top of. There are many ways you can structure a chat model. Um, there's no hard rule on how to do so. This is just the format that the llama models were trained on, the chat llama models. Um, but the core of a chat model is just having, you know, human and then uh, AI, human and then AI. So here's here, how you set the system prompt for the chat model. This is the first human message, AI message, and then uh, human, human message, and then the uh, AI message. And so, an ideal data set would be a diverse uh, amount of system prompts 
not only in their meaning, but how they're said, as well as the conversations and how they relate to the system prompts. So as I've said, um, due to those two factors, the amount of day you need grows. Uh, if you say that you don't need a system prompt, which maybe you don't need a system prompt, then, then the problem does get easier. So I have included some examples of these data sets. So of course, you'll need to pip install the requirements. Um, and I have examples for the symbol data set, which is the quotes data set that I've gone over uh, many times at this point. Uh, there is an instruct data set based on the Dolly 15K data set. And then for now, there's no chat data set, but I plan on adding one at a later date. I also have successfully fine-tuned Llama 70B on the instruct data set that I have. I was able to do so using methods like QLaura and flash attention. So stay tuned for a video on that topic soon. It's crazy to think that in less than two years, the biggest model you were able to train on consumer hardware was roughly 7 billion parameters. And now using these uh, new methods, QLaura and flash attention, we have 10 x it and we probably could go even a little bit bigger, maybe like 80 billion probably is near the max. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. If you liked it, please be sure to leave a like. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. Also be sure to check out the Discord for conversations on topics like this, as well as um, community help on a variety of different issues. Thank you so much for watching and stay brilliant.